VRAM or graphics card memory has been a hot topic over the past few years. That's because, in my opinion, we're not really getting enough of it. It's crazy to think that eight years ago, the GeForce GTX 1070, so they were GTXs back then, that was Nvidia's first mainstream GPU to pack eight gigabytes of VRAM and it cost $450 US, which is just shy of $600 US in today's money when you adjust for that inflation thing. So today, $600 US, that buys you a GeForce RTX 4070 Super, a GPU armed with just 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So more than eight, but after all of this time, it's not that much more. The bigger issue though are parts like the RTX 4060 Ti. It launched at $400 US for the measly eight gigabyte model. And although we did later get the 16 gigabyte version, it was introduced at $500 US. And thankfully due to a lack of demand, it did get an official price cut to $450 US, which is still not a great price for what it is, but certainly better than $500. What the 8GB and 16GB versions of the RTX 4060 Ti have clearly demonstrated is that for higher end gaming, 8GB of VRAM is just now woefully inadequate. But before we get into that, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ice Whale and their new Zima Blade single board server, their most compact server yet at roughly the size of a credit card, though you won't need much credit to buy it as the full Zima Blade 7700 NAS kit costs just $160. This kit allows you to build a sleek x86 two bay NAS that's compatible with TrueNAS, OMV and Casa OS. You can use it for media and entertainment or as a smart home server or even a compact cluster setup. Additionally, you can also upgrade its capabilities via a PCIe x4 slot, adding a GPU or perhaps more storage for example. It's a fantastic low powered home server with loads of potential, so for more information please check the link in the video description. Okay, so we've now shown a number of instances where 8GB is no longer enough for high quality gaming. And the clearest examples of this were seen when we first reviewed the 16GB version of the RTX 4060 Ti. There were a number of examples there where the 16GB model performed better, either delivering higher frame rates or a smoother experience. But what makes testing a lack of VRAM a bit tricky is the fact that when exceeding the VRAM buffer, not all games behave or handle this issue in the same way. Games that run into performance related problems, they're pretty easy examples to point to. Take this gameplay recently seen in Horizon Forbidden West. Comparing the 8 and 16 gigabyte versions of the RTX 4060 Ti at 1440p using the very high preset. This in-game cutscene is a great example. Not only is the 16 gigabyte model up to 35% faster, but there are far fewer frame time spikes, and this can be noticed even more when playing the game. As we see here, not only is the 16 gigabyte model on average 40% faster, but overall the frame time performance is significantly better resulting in a much smoother and far more consistent experience. Granted though, we are talking about sub 60 FPS gaming, but I know for many of you, this is still considered playable, especially for those of you that are all about graphical fidelity. That said, we can enable DLSS upscaling and the 16 gigabyte model is clearly better when doing so, at times offering significantly higher frame rate performance with far better frame time consistency and now we're looking at on average 73 FPS from the 16 gigabyte model and just 49 FPS from the 8 gigabyte model. That's almost 50% better performance for the 16 gigabyte version simply because it has enough VRAM. So this is a very clear and obvious example that we can point to where 8 gigabytes of VRAM isn't enough to play this game at 1440p in all of its glory. That said, you can certainly still play Horizon Forbidden West on an 8GB graphics card. Simply dial down the quality settings from very high to high, and you should be alright. On that note, if you're primarily into competitive multiplayer titles, and you play them using competitive type quality settings, which allow you to more easily spot enemy players while also maximising your frame rate, then this video doesn't really apply to you. For example, playing Call of Duty using the basic settings or Fortnite using the performance mode, that uses very little VRAM, and therefore the topic of VRAM, it's not really a concern to you. But getting back to the visually stunning single player games or the multiplayer titles with all the eye candy cranked up, you're not always going to see performance related issues like what we just saw in Horizon Forbidden West. Many games manage memory usage very differently simply dialing down quality settings automatically or removing textures altogether. 
Some examples of this include Halo Infinite, which will remove textures and even decrease the level of detail for certain objects. We saw a similar thing in Forspoken where the game looked very washed out and muddy when running with insufficient VRAM. Today though, the game handles this in a more optimised manner, though the end result is still fairly similar. Upon release, all textures would just be missing when you didn't have enough VRAM, and that resulted in a pretty horrible looking game. Today, the game does try to manage textures. It will remove textures for anything that you're not currently looking at, and it'll try and load them where they'll be most obvious. Though this does result in texture pop-in, and sometimes texture cycling where high quality textures appear and then disappear only to reappear moments later. And we've also observed very similar behavior in Hogwarts Legacy. So the most common issues that you're going to see when running out of VRAM include frame rate performance tanking, less consistent frame time performance, and or missing textures. Having demonstrated all of these issues in over a dozen games now, I wanted to tackle this subject in a slightly different way by looking at how much VRAM many of today's games are actually using, so not allocating, but rather how much VRAM they want to use when running a wide range of resolutions and quality settings. This sort of testing is simple enough, though it does take a tremendous amount of time as the game needs to be reset between each quality change setting and then played for at least 10 minutes to get an accurate read on memory usage. So this is what I've done for a dozen modern titles using the GeForce RTX 4090 as we really do need more than 16 gigabytes of VRAM for some of these configurations. The RTX 4090 packs a 24 gigabyte buffer, so it is ideal for this testing. Now games tend to allocate more memory when more memory is available, but for the purpose of this testing, we're looking at memory usage. So the numbers should be very close to what's required for a given resolution and then the accompanying quality settings. So let's get into it. Starting with Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, this is a title that I've noticed will delete certain textures when running out of VRAM, though it can also suffer performance related issues, so it's not always easy to spot insufficient VRAM in this title. Ideally the game wants an 8GB frame buffer for medium quality settings at 1080p, with high jumping up to 9.2GB and then very high hitting 10GB. Now it is possible to use the very high settings at 1080p on an 8GB GPU, but it's likely you will notice some frame time issues, and it's very unlikely that all textures will be rendered at full quality. Enabling ray tracing with the very high preset, that won't end well as it uses 11.2 gigabytes of VRAM, and if you enable frame generation, that's gonna push you up over 12 gigabytes. Then at 1440p, we're looking at a 7% increase in memory usage when compared to what we saw at 1080p making it difficult to play this game using an 8 gigabyte GPU, using the very high quality settings and basically impossible with ray tracing enabled. Finally, we see a further 8 to 10% increase in memory usage when jumping up to the 4K resolution. And for a higher end GPU, you really want 16 gigabytes of VRAM here. The 12 gigabyte models will work with the very high preset, but if you want to enable ray tracing and frame generation, you'll ideally want 16 gigabytes. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty is well optimized for 8GB graphics cards, and I'd say visually, texture quality is probably the biggest weakness of this title. They tend to be a bit bland. At 1080p, it's possible to run with the Ultra preset on an 8GB graphics card, and doing so you should see no memory related issues. And the same is also true for 1440p. Performance related issues will start to appear at 4K, though I don't think there are many, if any, 8GB GPUs that are powerful enough to play Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K using the Ultra preset, so this is probably a non-issue. Rather, the problems start to occur for 8GB graphics cards when enabling ray tracing, as this pushes memory usage to 11GB at 1080p and 12GB at 1440p. Then, if you want to enable frame generation as well, you're looking at 12 gigabytes of usage at 1080p, 13.5 gigabytes at 1440p, and 16.5 gigabytes at 4K. Forza Motorsport will comfortably play on an 8 gigabyte graphics card using the high preset, even at 1440p, though 4K might be a bit of a stretch. It's also possible that you could get away with the ultra preset at 1080p and 1440p, depending on how the game handles assets. The Ultra preset though with ray tracing enabled, that'll be out of the question. 10.3 gigabytes was used at just 1080p and 11 gigabytes at 4K. So you'll want a 12 gigabyte GPU to get the most out of this title. 
A lot of people think that The Last of Us Part 1 kicked off the whole VRAM discussion around 8GB graphics cards, but really there were signs of trouble well before this title came along. And we see that even after several optimization patches, the game still requires more than 8GB of VRAM at 1080p if you wish to use the Ultra preset. The high preset, on the other hand, will work just fine and should even be okay at 1440p, though it will be insufficient for 4K gaming. At 1440p, a 12GB buffer should be plenty, though it might start to become a problem at 4K. This game uses FSR frame generation, which doesn't seem to increase VRAM usage all that much, at least in this example. Now, moving on to Avatar. This game is very memory hungry, though unlike some of the other games I've tested, exceeding the VRAM buffer here doesn't result in a huge performance or visual loss. The main issue you'll see is less consistent frame time performance, and while that's not ideal, it's not as jarring as what we see in most other titles. For example, playing using the Ultra preset on an 8GB GPU, it isn't too bad despite the game using 10.7GB at 1080p and 12.6GB at 1440p. It's not flawless though, and you will see frame time spikes as the game tries to manage a lack of VRAM. A quick in-game comparison between the 8GB and 16GB versions of the RTX 4060 Ti at 1440p using the ultra quality preset saw the 16GB model delivering 25% higher 1% lows. Then for those of you gaming at 4K, you will want at least 16GB of VRAM to ensure optimal performance. Those playing Homeworld 3 with an 8GB graphics card will want to avoid the epic quality preset and instead stick to high as the maximum setting. Though if high does result in noticeable frame time performance issues, I'd recommend turning it down to medium, as this will keep you within an 8GB buffer, even at 1440p. Then, for those of you who want to visually max out this title without having to worry about a lack of VRAM, at 1080p and 1440p, 12GB will work fine, but at 4K with ray tracing, I recommend going for 16GB. We know that Hogwarts Legacy is a heavy user of VRAM, and without enough, all kinds of undesirable things happen. Basically, you're looking at FPS performance tanking, horrible frame time stuttering, and aggressive texture popping, or just no textures at all. Realistically here, 8GB graphics cards are limited to the high preset, without any ray tracing at 1080p and 1440p. Enabling the ultra preset will result in either missing textures and or poor frame time performance. Now, 12GB graphics cards should be fine at 1080p and 1440p, regardless of the quality settings used, though this won't be the case at 4K where we recommend having at least 16GB. Starfield is probably the least visually impressive AAA title released last year, it's certainly up there anyway. Visually, it is a bit of a hot mess, but at least it's not also memory hungry, using very little VRAM at 1080p and 1440p. As a result, 8GB of VRAM is plenty here, and it's not until you get up to 4K with the ultra settings that you might need 12GB. As we've already seen, Horizon Forbidden West does require more than 8GB of VRAM if you wish to use the very high preset, and in fact VRAM usage at 1080p and 1440p is almost identical. Now dialing down to the high preset, that'll work just fine, so at least there's that. For this title, 12GB is ample even for those of you gaming at 4K. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 will use more than 8GB of VRAM at 1080p with the high preset and well over it if you want to enable frame generation. And the situation worsens for 8GB graphics cards at 1440p as here you'll want at least 12GB. Then at 4K we have some evidence that 12GB might not be enough. And if it is, it'll only be just enough, and this is seen when enabling DLSS frame generation with the high preset. Ghost of Tsushima will play just fine on an 8GB graphics card at 1080p, even with the very high preset, and the same is also true right up to 4K. That said, if you enable DLSS frame generation, you might see some issues at 1440p and almost certainly at 4K, as the game pushes well past 8GB, though 12GB of VRAM will be more than enough. Alan Wake 2 is a super visually impressive game, and it's one that requires a good amount of VRAM. At 1080p, an 8GB GPU will suffice for the medium and high preset, though enabling ray tracing will be problematic as this requires over 10GB, so a 12GB VRAM buffer would be required.
Jumping up to 1440p, we see that it is possible to get away with 8 gigabytes using the high preset, though the occasional frame stutter will be observed. Again, ray tracing is completely out of the question when using the high preset and will require 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Finally, for those of you wanting to play Alan Wake 2 at 4K, you will need 12 gigabytes of VRAM for most settings and really 16 gigabytes is in order for ray tracing. So there you have it, more and more games are using over eight gigabytes of VRAM, particularly at 1440p using high quality type settings. And as we've known for a while now, stuff like ray tracing also increases VRAM usage quite substantially. So if you are interested in RT moving forward, I'd recommend a minimum of 16 gigabytes of VRAM. For those of you gaming at 1080p, for the latest titles, eight gigabytes is more often than not right on the edge. And in some examples, higher ultra will push you over. And then at 1440p, we found eight gigabytes is more suitable for medium type presets. And even then, if you want to enable stuff like ray tracing, it's likely going to be a problem. The great thing about VRAM usage is that you can dial down quality settings, stuff like textures, and receive a perfectly playable experience. So there is some scalability there. This means if you're buying a more entry level product, having to compromise on stuff like texture quality, it's a lot less of an issue. This is why products like the Radeon RX 6600 have been perfectly acceptable, at least when dropping down to $200 US or less. For that kind of money, a compromise on VRAM is somewhat justifiable. That said, paying $400 for an 8GB product is a bad joke, and it's what's made the 8GB version of the RTX 4060 Ti so offensive to potential buyers. Released midway through 2023, it's hard to believe NVIDIA was still asking $400 for 8GB of VRAM, given where gaming is now. Realistically, back in 2023, gamers should have been demanding that anything over $300 be armed with at least 12GB of VRAM, and then anything over $400 really should have had 16GB. And this is AI boom or not. They still want to sell some GeForce GPUs, and the same applies to AMD. Well, AMD don't want to sell GeForce GPUs, they want to sell Radeon GPUs, but I think you know what I mean. Regardless of what did or didn't happen there, with the exception of the entry-level options, you really shouldn't be buying an 8GB graphics card. In fact, I'd say 12GB is now the bare minimum, with 16GB being the ideal target. And rumor has it, the next generation of GeForce GPUs won't see an increase in VRAM capacity, which I find really hard to believe, given how limited the Ada Lovelace generation was but I also wouldn't put it past NVIDIA, especially given how many PC enthusiasts at places like Reddit X seem to defend mid-range 8GB graphics cards. Anyway, I'd be buying a graphics card with at least 16GB of VRAM for that peace of mind, knowing that all of the textures are rendered the way that they're meant to be, and that the VRAM won't be responsible for any frame time issues. And that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. And we also have Floatplane Patreon. Sign up to either one of those. We'll give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, Q&As, a lot of cool stuff there. So check it out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.